Hey, 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 a blast from the past. We have come to the end of the road. If I could sing this, you know I would. We are in chapter 12 of our book, The End. We are doing linear regression analysis. So let's remind ourselves of a few things. Earlier in class today, we filled in all of this. You should have yours completed, even though I don't. And as we look at this, what we're about to do now is to do hypothesis tests when it, for these linear regressions. Okay, so let's start on page three of our notes. Okay, I flubbed this, so change it. So what is the difference between a sample regression line and a population regression line? Well, it's just like it sounds. A sample comes from an SRS or an RS, and here is your notation. We've seen it before. Y hat is equal to A plus BX, and of course we know B is the slope. And that is with our sample. When it comes to the idea of the population, here it comes from the population, so it comes from all. Now notice our symbols have had the nerve enough to change. Okay, so here we've got our Greek again, but haven't we said before when it comes to the population, there's Greek in play. So we have y hat is going to equal to alpha plus beta x. When you can get confused on which is the slope and which is the y-intercept, spoiler alert, anything that's connected to x is going to be your slope. That other thing has got to be the y-intercept. Now, if you're wondering, what do I mean when I talk about sample regression line? Well, look at look this scatter plot. It looks like the regression line is going to be, i got to add some more points, looks like it's going to be about there. That's a, that is a sample regression line of just the sample data points that we have. Here, let me see if I can do a better job. Oh, look at how drunk that line looks. Okay, I'm adding a couple more samples to it. Okay, here is the, a second sample regression line. And here, third time's a charm. Finally got it right. But look, this is if this is coming from the same data, um, the same population, which it is, sample one, sample two, sample three, look how different these lines are. Here, here's the population, and let's see if I can keep myself a straight arm, straight hand, finally. So that is the difference between the sample regression line and a population regression line. Okay, so let's proceed to the next point. When we are looking at a sampling distribution, so you know what a sampling distribution is. It's like taking all of these samples, sample one, sample two, sample three. Okay, we're choosing an SRS for the N observations, but now we're looking at points of X and Y from our population. And remember, our population size and with the least square regression line. We are saying here, I've mentioned this to you right there, okay, that we have y hat still being the, the predicted of y, where b is the slope of the, of the sample regression, which I just mentioned a couple of minutes ago. Then, if that's true, we have the mean of the sampling distribution, which is the lowercase b, is going to, so the mean of that sample slope, I should say, is going to equal that population slope. So right here, here's the mean of all the different samples. And as I go back here, sample one, sample two, so if we took the mean of those, took the, found the slopes of these, and then took the average of those slopes, and then that means that that is going to equal what I have right here, that population slope. Another thing that we know about this is the standard deviation. Ah, we have a new equation. So we're talking about the standard deviation of the slope. Remember, standard deviation is nothing but the variability around it. So, and look at this nasty equation. But as we look at this equation, this is applicable only as long as the 10% rule applies. So remember, it's 10 times the sample size has got to be greater than that of the population. This formula is not on the formula sheet, but we're going to find that, man, we're not going to have to even worry about it simply because the majority of the time it's going to be a computer printout anyway. That's how the AP test has been in the past. Okay, and the last thing that I want to add to it 
is that this is true if the sampling distribution of B, so here the slope, the slope of slope, just consider that a distribution of small, but nevertheless distribution, will have an will be approximately normal if Y, if the Y values are approximately normal given X. So it's saying the sampling distribution is going to be approximately normal if the Y values are, with the understanding that the X values that help us to get to the Y um, are normal. The next thing I want to discuss are what are the three factors that affect the standard deviation? Well, I don't know why I mentioned this one last. Sample size, of course, because it affects variability. As I continue just going up here, another thing that affects it, this value right here, the standard deviation of our x. Now, remember, um, a point represents both x and y. So when I'm talking about the standard deviation of x, I'm just talking about given our x values on our horizontal axis, we just take the standard deviation of it. So if I'm talking about a 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, if I take the standard deviation of this, which is not going to be bad at all because of there just being odd numbers, that's what I'm referring to because these are your x-axis and this is your y. Okay, so and look at the math behind this. As this gets bigger, of course this is going to get smaller. Okay, all you got to do is do the math. Okay, next, and sorry that I went backwards on this, but oh well. Here, sigma itself. Sigma is the standard deviation for the population, for the big picture, what I've got going on right there. Here's the math, and as we look at the math, it does make sense. As this gets bigger, of course, the slope, the standard deviation of the slope is going to also get bigger. So these are the three factors that, in, that affect the standard deviation. The first, the, the two that I mentioned the, t the first two that are listed here, mathematically it makes sense. And then this last one, well, let's face it, as the sample size increases, the variability um, decreases. Well, that's the statistical mantra. The next thing that I want to discuss is this. Okay, where, um, what are the conditions and assumptions? Well, we've got four of them. It makes sense that if it is a linear... Um, it makes sense that if it's a linear relationship that we are determining that one of the conditions and assumptions when we're coming up with our confidence interval and our statistics test is that it's got to be linear. Okay? And remember here, the true regression line is represented by this equation. So that's your population regression line. So that's one criteria. Another criteria, well, hasn't it always been that way? The 10% rule, unless it's some type of experiment, of course. Okay. Also, our observations um, are independent of each other. Here's a new one. Equal standard deviations. Well, the standard deviation has got to be the same for all values of x. Okay. So the standard deviation of y has got to be the same for all values of x. And I'm going to show you an example on that. Matter of fact, let's jump to the next page. Now look at this right here, number one. My question is, look at all these scatter plots and how you have all these points that are dangling around so close to the line. Then all of a sudden you've got points here, 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 here. Now we're going to discuss this tomorrow, but my question is, is the standard deviation, which is basically the distance away from the regression line, and that's a residual plot that you've got going on right there, okay, are those equally distant here and here? Eh, let's discuss that tomorrow. Okay, our next thing. Okay, so I mentioned four things. Let's go back and mention the fifth, fifth one. Random sample, 
um, and random experiment. Well, the bottom line is that, yeah, we know that's true. So my next point or question is, let me expand upon we know that's true. Let me say it a lot better than I just did. Randomness and increasing sample size is what's important about statistics. So, of course, we need to have a large enough sample size, but if it's not a random selection, unbiased selection, then, you know, we've wasted our time. Okay, next, my next question is, what is the first step of the inference? Well, here we have to determine the unknown parameter. Isn't that the steps of the inference every time we do it? Yes, it is. Okay, B has got to be an unbiased estimator for the true B. So what happens is for our hypothesis test with this, we're going to find that our HO is going to be beta is going to equal 0. And here when we say beta is equal to 0, we're not talking about the slope is equal to 0. We're saying that. So what I was saying again is that this, this statement right here is saying that there is no difference in the linear relationship. And the reality is, I know as you're hearing that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But it makes more sense when we're looking at the HA. And we're going to talk about this in a lot more depth. We're going to be doing this section probably in two days. But here, as we have beta, and let's say that I'm looking for is, is um, less than. Here, if we reject this, which is the more the, most of the time what happens, we're going to end up supporting this, which is saying that in this particular case, our slope is negative. Or our slope is, well, in this case, it's just going to say our slope is negative. So, or it could say we've got convincing evidence that it reduces that this, the slope is, um, it does reduce. So this right here, this HO, is not as important or the explanation of this doesn't make as much sense as the idea of we, re, re, we reject it and we take it here. And the only reason that I went into this was just to remind you of what our first step of our inference and inference is, determining the unknown parameter. And our unknown parameter is always going to be the beta. Now, let's go to the next page. Page 5. You know in everything that we've done, before we've done the inference test, we've always started off with our confidence interval. So here's our confidence interval, generically speaking. This is what's on your books. And in your, in your, on your formula sheet, that's a better way of saying it. Here is the confidence interval for the um, test statistic for the T interval for the slope. And I said for the test statistic, so let me correct myself. The confidence interval for the T interval for the slope. Your slope plus or minus T star, and here is what? Your standard deviation of the slope, your standard error. Here, here's our formula for the standard error. Now, the problem is what I just circled. That is not on our formula sheet. This is what's on our formula sheet. And what they've done is they've replaced this for that S. And I know your thoughts are, seriously, we're going to have to memorize this mess? I'll say it again. In most cases, 99.9% .9 of the time, if not even, I want to say 100% of the time, they've given us an output analysis. Yes, they will give us this formula somewhere in the equation, but they won't give it to us in the formula sheet, but they'll give it to us as a part of the test if this does come up. There's a couple of problems that I found in the test that I want to 
um, we're going to be discussing when it comes to this. Lastly, I want to talk about the confidence interval calculator, and this is something that we are rarely going to be using again. Why? Again, the computer output is what's going to be given to us, not any raw data. Okay, so when we look at this right here, and if you go to, yeah, this battery's been dead forever. Go stat, test, up or down to linear regression, and where is it? It might not, this is a linear regression test. I don't even see the linear regression confidence interval. Nope. Nope. Am I blind? Nope. And that's not ANOVA. ANOVA's analysis of variance. Okay. So this is an 84 thing, and I don't have an 84. Go over to stat, test, linear regression. And then what they're going to do is tell you um, L1, L2. So that means raw data was put in there. How are we going to do it, um, ladies and gentlemen, that have 83s and 83 pluses? Again, we don't have to worry about it because just like problem number six right here, it's going to give us a computer printout. So I want to end this thing because it's taking way longer. I'm going to cut it short. Bye-bye. End of the road.